What, what inspired you to do this? I, it was, was it a picture? Uh, yes, a portrait. And uh, from that came the story. And uh, I had no other plots at that time. So I said, why not give it a go? Describe the picture, the portrait. Oh, it, uh, the portrait is a very <coughs> serious looking gentleman uh, staring down from the wall. And it was in the house of uh, one of the people we visited, uh, me and my wife. Uh, the, uh, the portrait was of the woman's first husband and this gentleman she married to, he had married God knows how many times so everybody's lost the count but the portrait was there of the his uh, new wife's first husband staring down and he was oblivious to it completely uh, so that I found interesting <laughs> <laughs> I would personally be unnerved if that happened to me so. and then we found out that uh, the woman had made it a condition uh, that her first husband's portrait would remain in the house. Wow. So that also goes into the story. That picture is definitely dominates the book and, and this poor woman's, Mona's life. It is, you know, it, it's her guilty conscience, uh, whether it, you know, guides her the right way or the wrong way, but it is there and it also provides some humorous moments when he tries to uh, creep into the story or into a new life as well. Uh, so that. Because she looks at the picture and it seems to change to, depending on, you know, what's happening. Exactly. Tell me about the, the man that she has this flirtation with who's the next door neighbor's tenant? Yes, that's right. Um, he's a bit of a rake and we, we are not exactly sure about how to describe this man because, you know, he's, um, he's a crook, you know, we, we find out uh, halfway through the book. But how he acts towards Mona in the beginning and there are certain things that he does which are um, sincere in their, uh, in their own uh, in their own right and she that's why she finds it very hard to judge him and that's how I wanted the readers to find him you know hard to judge and this I think happens a lot in uh, normal life people are not very uh, black and white in their in their actions uh, even villains uh, you know they they have lighter moments they have uh, emotional moments so I wanted to experiment with that uh, feeling in this story it's really about Mona. It is. It is from the, from the title of the story to the very last line. It is about her. But Mona is a, pr even more than the reader is the last person to know that. Really, I think. Exactly because you know she's she's struggling so hard to come to grips with this new reality that she has created for herself with these all these uh, feelings that she has to contend with uh, against the wishes of her family and constantly uh, questioning her own judgment whether she did the right thing or she did the wrong thing uh, even when she's having troubles with the second relationship and she stops herself from taking certain actions which she later resorts to she's always struggling and this is uh, this is the reason that uh, things remain interesting till the uh, till the last uh, page although the book is about this r romance and second marriage it, a lot of it is about what ha the stuff that happened in the first that Mona glossed over or denied or what do you how do you describe what happened to her what happened in in Mona Emmett's uh, first marriage um, and uh, her relationship with her deceased husband makes her who she is when the story opens and when she meets this new person Slamat Ali she tries to uh, she feels what it feels like to be a woman, to be um, seen as something more than, you know, a household help, which she was to her first husband in, uh, in many respects. So she uh, feels that feeling and she wants to undo that first part of her, uh, of her persona. And when we, when we uh, as we read uh, the story further along, we find that she was a very outgoing person. Uh, in her uh, in her younger years, and it was only because of certain tragedies in her family, her parents' death, and her, their moving with an uncle, and uh, she became more uh, more um, uh, introverted. So that all starts to come off when she meets this new person, who 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 she thinks is uh, very interested in her and uh, in her as a woman. So that her original self begins to emerge. And I think for all that happens to her, at the end of the book, I think she's glad it happened and that, that it was worth the price that she had to pay. Yes, because, you know, unless, unless she had gone through this whole experience, she could never have 
found what she really wanted, which she experiences in the end, even though there's somebody who's yet another person who's available and you know seemingly very interested in her. Still, she wants to keep her independence and uh, remain the person who she is without any further identity uh, in, in, in a relationship. She's just very satisfied being who she is. And this she discovers only through this uh, whole adventure. I, uh, I really liked Mona. I, 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 and I w just watching her grow up for the first time, it, which is odd for a woman in about, about, about 50, that it, it was just so nice to see her blossom. Yes, um, I, I read this very long time ago uh, in Prime of Miss Jean Brody that the prime of your life could, you know, come at any age. You don't have to be a particular age, very young to, you know, be in the prime of your life. And I think it's true that uh, we could rediscover ourselves, we could reinvent ourselves. And this is one of the great aspects of life that, you know, if you, if you really believe in the uh, in, in the plastic nature of life and in human will that you yes you can change things for yourself for the better uh, this is uh, this is one of the messages that y y you say come out of this story that yes it is true and it is possible the book is the story of a widow it's a novel I've been speaking with the author Musharraf Ali Farooqi and the story of a widow published by Kanaf Canada